Hello and welcome, Exiles, to my Sunder Crit Bleed Chaos Inoculation Scion using a scepter. Now, none of those words really belong together, or you might get some shock value from it, but this actually works quite a bit better than you might think, and I'll go through my reasoning. Now, to begin with, I just wanted to play Bleed plus Sunder. It's not the best Bleed DPS. It's not the worst. It kind of just a feels good chunk, chunk, chunk. I really like the satisfying growth of the spikes as they get farther and farther away and it just seems like something fun i would enjoy so that's where i came up with my plan to play bleed and center together now i wanted to try out perfect agony because i think perfect agony seems quite strong with the ability to scale quite a lot more dot multi from it than you could previously myself for this character we got all the way to 678 crit multi which the equivalent of that in dot multi would have been to get around 570 dot multi from tree passives and gear and I have to say, I don't think that's a number you can really hit too easily with just regular dot multi sources, hence why Perfect Agony. Getting the crit was a little bit of a task, but that's a little part of the reason why we chose a Scepter. Scepters are one of the three one-hand base types that can be used with Sunder. Maces are the other option, and Axes are the other option. And the reason we went with Scepter is because they have a much higher base crit. Scepters have the point the seven base crit versus the maces and axes have the standard five. And when this what this ends up meaning is if you have a crit roll on it, it's the difference in about a 9.5 crit roll versus a 7% crit roll. So it's a big base crit percentage difference. And that is a very important thing because with perfect agony, if you don't crit, you don't inflict the ailment you're trying to inflict. For us, that's bleed. And that's a very feels bad situation. If I only had 70% crit chance, it would feel fairly inconsistent for how often I would inflict my bleed. Right now, I'm at about a 95% crit chance, and the bleed feels fairly consistent and reliable. Now, let's get into the basics of why we chose Chaos Inoculation and a Scion. And the reasoning being is, Scion is an ascendancy that has a very good starting location, which we can then use to acquire a good amount of percent fish combined with light of meaning and a might of the meek and an unnatural. I think it's a nice little combination to get the percent damage off the ground, even though we don't have much percent damage on our tree. And then on top of that, I like Cyan for its ability to just have some good generic defenses. We went with Guardian plus uh, Gladiator in order to get some very good block scaling and regen scaling. And that contributes a large amount of our defenses where the extra passes from scion and the tree starting location is where we got percent damage and damage scaling in general from so that was the idea is the ability to allow us to go for something like chaos inoculation and good es gear scaling and have a tree that doesn't really have to focus on a lot of the bleed nodes because we get a lot of our percent damage scaling from our ascendancy location and from our uh creative use of light of meaning and a Thread of Hope combined with a Timeless Jewel. Looking at the Timeless Jewel we have here, a very nifty little combination of a Thread of Hope combined with an Eternal Hubris. What this allows for us is to get a lot of percent damage scaling. You'll notice we have 50% uh, bleed with 10% faster bleed. We have that twice, so 100% bleed damage along with 20 faster bleed. And then we have three 40 crit multi nodes, which is part of the reason we're able to get such a high crit multi number without necessarily having many crit nodes on our tree in general. So that's the idea of the Scion. As for the Chaos Inoculation, this is just something I've grown to believe since they upgraded the bases is that energy shield builds just can scale a bit harder in terms of defenses. Uh, when you're talking about a life-based character, you're gonna be hard capped around that five to seven to eight K life if you're really trying to get good life on your gear. Whereas an energy shield based character can easily clear 10,000 and we got all the way up to 16,000. And that sort of number, combined with whatever defensive layers you add on top of that, it's just gonna result in a more tanky situation in terms of like that baseline number being much higher means every defensive layer you get on top of that is that much more impactful. For ourselves, we got all the way to 90 max all res, we got 100% suppression chance, we got 70 attack block and 60 spell block and all those things paired together ends up feeling quite good. As for physical, we did some of the standard stuff that tricksters would do. We get fizz taken as chaos on our helmet and our body armor we combine that with flesh and stone and if i could have fit an arctic armor i would have for a little bit extra dr but it didn't really feel necessary if i ever go to take a big shaper slam or any big physical hit we can easily immortal call that and live quite handily so that was the idea behind the defensive layers and the idea behind gaming cast inoculation this is one of those things where 
when you're looking at a build and you're saying, how can I scale this character to the late game? And I would never start out as energy shield based. Energy shield requires a lot of gearing. You need good energy shield gear for it to work out. So I would start out as life based. But when you're thinking about upgrading your character, a lot of times you think, let me just get what I have right now, but better. And so say you just keep upgrading life gear, upgrading life gear, upgrading life gear. That I think has a lower ceiling and defensive potential than if you say, okay, I've played this life character a lot. I have a lot of currency. What if I throw that pre that pre uh, thought of, oh, I need to keep upgrading life gear. And what if I change that to, what if I just approach this from an energy shield angle? How far would that go? And that's what I wanted to do with this character. It's definitely something where we threw budget out the window and we tried our hardest to see how good an ES setup could be. And this is what we came up with. About 10 million DPS, I think, roughly. And, you know, a multi-100,000 Ellie Max hit. And it feels pretty good, especially with Recover ES on block and some good regen. So that was the idea of the character. Now let's look at what this character looks like in sorts of how are we getting our crit chance? Because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering. Uh, we have very few crit nodes in the tree, but yet our character without a single crit support has 90% plus crit chance. And the reason we're able to do that is through a few things. Number one is uh, Mage Blood. One of the greatest uses for Mage Blood is doing something like a diamond flask on top of a uh, crit chance suffix on a flask that gives you about 300% crit chance from just the mage blood, which is very, very potent. You can also include things like a um, eye base crit weapon because we chose a scepter. That's why we get the 9.6 base crit right there. We also included power charges from a grand spectrum as well as frenzy for some damage scaling. So that gives us another 150% crit chance there. On our tree, we have a grand total of like four passive points put into crit. I don't think I have anything else in terms of crit chance, just this wheel here for disavowing. So we get a little bit of crit chance there. And then we also combine one of a jewel that's kind of growing on me in terms of uh, power level, which is Tekrod's Gaze. It gives 40% crit chance per a uh, murderous eye jewel you have on your character. And we have four murderous eye jewels giving us a total of um, 160% crit chance, which is a nice little extra boost of crit chance there as well. We also combine uh, the other combination we're getting away with with Tekrod's Gaze. As you'll notice, we have Shock Avoid on two jewels. That combined with Storm Shroud gives us 100% ailment avoidance for elemental ailments. We're obviously Poison Immune being Chaos Base. And then we take care of Bleed by grabbing ourselves Rally Cash, which is fantastic when dealing with Bleed while moving and really nullifies Bleed just in general. So... That goes over a lot of the characters. Uh, oh, and we are also uh, getting Fortify. Another benefit, I should say, for Scepters is you can click Overlord, which gives you Fortify for six seconds when you hit an enemy. And as far as I can tell, I'm getting four, uh, 20 Fortify stacks on even Ubers, so this is quite good. It does mean we can't use something like Deadly Ailments because it would make our hits a little bit too low, but it works out pretty well. And we're trying out the new Support Gem, Rupture, which gives a bit of damage multiplier per bleed i think it stacks up to three times so enemies can take up to 90 percent more damage from bleeding makes your bleeds a bit quicker but i think it's worth it in combination with unbound ailments because that's just such a massive damage multiplier that it justifies it pretty well in my opinion anyways a little bit of ramp time because then you have to inflict some extra ruptures on there you have to aggravate the bleed but we get there pretty quickly because we have a decent amount of aggravate bleed chance between our mastery here with exerted attacks between our uh scion ascendancy between vulnerability we proc that pretty quickly we also have a fun little combination here of this crit mastery i think is hilarious is if you have 500 crit, uh 500 es on your shield for example this one mastery here is worth 50 crit multi which is kind of crazy uh and on top of that this uh wheel comes with quite a bit of spell block combined with tempest shield and the guardian spell block from our um scion ascendancy that's how we're getting to about 60 spell block there and guardian attack blocks giving us all the way up to 70. Even though I don't have a lot of block nodes on my tree, we have quite an efficient amount of block just from the scion plus uh, guardian plus glad combination, and then this wheel here and tempest shield. All right, that goes over a lot of the basics of the character in terms of. Oh, I also forgot we are 90 all res, and we're doing that through melding. You'll notice we have 90 all res. This is because we have 94 max lightning res. And we combine it with this melding jewel. You'll see if we take off the melding jewel, we go to 75, 75 fire cold. But with melding, we end up doing it. We just barely got the res amount. Technically, maybe I could trade a passive for a Lyra to get a little bit more overcap would be nice. But 
we got there just barely a little bit of my gear could have been probably changed out suffixes a little bit for a bit better res here and there but we still managed to do it and I have to say man it feels good when you have 15,000 plus es 90 all res four to five the defensive players came together and they came together quite well let's go ahead and give a little look at doing a um a fortress map here with a minus suppression we do have 100 suppression which we get through um the suppression wheel five tattoos a 10 percent here suppress on a shield 10 percent suppress on our chest piece and then we get about 19 percent suppress from quartz flask i think that's all of our sources of suppress but uh, i might be missing something i forgot about and wherever that is who knows but point is we got to 100 percent suppression this is really just combining a bunch of like, oh, I'm going to invest into this and just try to eat, just trying to eke out every little last bit of power here. Now let's look at a little bit of gameplay of what it looks like clearing a uh, T-17 Fortress. We have on this, I guess, a bunch of monster AoE, unique boss speed, unique boss damage, and of course, breaking our suppression, which is a pretty important defensive layer. Um, for the most part, I would say 10 million bleed DPS is plenty for most baseline content but if you try to do something like deep delve you're gonna feel real zdps in a situation like that but i'm fairly happy with it playing for playing with 10 million bleed dps it feels quite quite satisfying good deep damage up time you don't really notice too much that you're not instantly killing enemies but that's just part of the thing you do when you're when you start going for dot builds over some more consistent hit based damage setups I'm happy with it regardless. Okay, so this guy is a <clears throat> fortress boss. He has a bunch of extra percent damage and speed, and hopefully we can do this fight without dying here. And, uh, looks like he's phased, and he should be uh, dead any second now, I think. And there we go. It's the, it's the T-17 fortress. Ultimately, this character would not like mods that like break your block because we do have a lot of block and you'd want to avoid, you know, things like less defense because that will just cut your ES number in half or whatever it is. But anyways, that's what it looks like playing the crit bleed Sunders uh, Scion. I know this is a very high investment character. I'm very well aware of that. The point I was trying to prove making this character specifically was that if you did have a lot of currency and you were trying to make the highest like best possible version of you, you let's say you're you cared about bleed sunder um and you might think oh i started with life base let me just make my life base gear better and better and better i would i would say maybe look at it a, diff a different way maybe the best version of your build could be an energy based setup with some very high-end energy gear energy shield gear i should say because it might just scale harder and a bit higher even if that might be like a, a, a switch in your brain that doesn't quite make sense. It doesn't necessarily make sense to be like, oh, I've been playing, I started out life base and I'm just upgrading my life base gear, but actually the high end, the absolute end game of this character is just better as energy shield, or it might be. Um, anyways, this is the bleed sign. Had a lot of fun making this project. Hopefully you guys enjoy it just for, if, if anything else, uh, a good uh, look into what can be done. <laughs> you could take something that maybe doesn't sound right, crit, ti bleed sunder scepter sun you can combine things that you wouldn't really think make sense and actually make a product that works pretty well in terms of how well it does late game of if i was going to make bleed sunder the best i could how good could i make it i think it'd be pretty hard to make a better product than this in terms of bleed sunder but who knows maybe there's a lot of people who have already done a much better version a much better version of bleed sunder out there and I'd be interested in seeing it. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching, Exiles. Take care and peace out. Have a good one.